Recently, I reviewed a bushcraft knife from the company Beavercraft, and in the introduction of that video, I mentioned that Beavercraft had actually sent me an axe to test as well. Well, I have it with me today. This is the AX1 Compact Hatchet. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this tool, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Beavercraft for sending me out their compact hatchet so that I could share it with you. What I thought I would do is, yes, I'll do a few demonstrations with it. Um, I'm going to keep them rather minimal because there are so many things you can do with a small hatchet that I don't think I could get them all done in one video. But what I thought I would do is compare it with my older, actually very old, Wetterling's uh, wildlife hatchet. And uh, that way you can get an idea of what the two hatchets are like side by side. All right, so what we'll do is we'll just focus in a little bit closer on the AX1 compact hatchet. I'll give you some specifications for it, and then we'll get to the demonstrations. All right, so what I'm going to do to save a little bit of time is rather than go through all the physical specifications for the hatchet, I'll put them in the video description below and you can take a look at them there. There are a few things about the hatchet I do want to mention as we go along because I want to get to bringing in the Wetterlings hatchet so that we can compare them. So two things right off at the top. This is one this is a belt loop that came with the hatchet made of the same split leather. Um, I refer to it as a new buck. I'm not sure if that's the correct name or not, but it reminds me of new buck, which is a split leather that it was on the bushcraft knife. It works. It's sufficient. It holds it on my belt if that's the way you like to carry those things. So put that aside and a nice little mask, little mask made of the same material dome snap here and it fits on well enough and you can take that off and put it in your pocket so you don't lose it. Okay, so the only things I want to mention right up front is first the head. The head is made from 1066 high carbon steel, the same as all the knives in the uh, Beavercraft lineup. And this is made in Ukraine, just to be clear, just like the Beavercraft knives are. This is made in Ukraine, same steel, 1066 high carbon steel, hardened to 56 to 58, so a little bit softer than it would be on their knives, which is appropriate for an axe. You don't want it as hard as you do on your knives because, it, well, the, the chances of chipping it out are a little bit greater as well. So this can take a bit more impact without doing any real damage to the axe itself. But what's interesting about this is 1066 is a higher carbon steel than most axes are made from. Most are made in the 1045, 1055 range, and that's appropriate again for an axe as long as it's well heat treated. Using a higher carbon steel with a good heat treat means this should not only take a good edge, but keep that edge longer. But if it's properly heat treated, it won't uh, chip out or roll the edge and should be easy, still easy enough to sharpen. So that's what I wanted to say about the axe head itself. It is hand forged. It shows all the forging marks. It's actually very well done. And there's quite a bit of finished detail that you don't often get on hatchets. And you can see where the pawl has all been angled and chamfered off right there. It's not a hardened pawl. It's not a hammer pawl. This is meant for, at most, hammering wood or having wood hammer it like with a baton but not for hammering anything hard. You don't want to hammer metal. You don't want to hammer rocks with the back of the pole itself. Let's just turn our attention to the handle for a second. So this is made of ash. It is a, a good hardwood handle. Um, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the ergonomics of the handle in a few moments time. I think what I can show you right now, hopefully this will show up because I wasn't sure. If you look at the grain, the way it is here, it looks like it's horizontal. It is not horizontal. It's actually running at an angle. I think that's showing up there, probably 45 degree angle. So, okay, it's a hatchet, it's not an ax. If this were a full size ax with, with something like a 28 inch haft on it, I would be a little concerned about that. And maybe not extremely concerned, but a little bit concerned because ideally you want the grain to run vertical like that. That'll take the impact the best, flex, and flex appropriately. But if it's horizontal, it just runs the chances of splitting out. This is a small hatchet. It's not going to require all the flex in the handle that a large one does. It won't take all the impact that a large one does. So being angled like that is not an issue at all. And you can see there is a, a lanyard hole in it as well. Let's go up to the the eye and you can see the eye is well wedged and has a cross pin inside just to sp spread the edge out a little bit more. Okay, so that's what I wanted to share with you in terms of the materials used on the uh, hatchet itself. Now, uh, maybe I'll just talk a little bit more about the design before we bring in the other one. So as you can see, it does have a convex edge on it. 
it's fairly abrupt. Now, I'll mind you, this came sharp, and it's still sharp, and really, all I've had to do is, I do run it on a ceramic now and then, and then I will strop it, <clears throat> and the reason I do that, take it to that degree, is because it's more of a crafting hatchet to me than, than a fire prep tool perfectly capable of fire prep. I have used it for that, but I, I think I just prefer to use it for crafting more than anything else and use other tools for fire prep. But that is a fairly abrupt edge, uh, easy enough to sharpen. And I guess what I like about this is if you're not happy with the way it is, this is not an expensive hatchet. If you want to, say, bring that edge down a little flatter, then why not just have at it? You can do it with a belt grinder if you want, or you can do it more traditionally with an, an axe file and take it down and then finish off the edge. I think it would be easy enough to do. I may do that yet. Uh, I'm not quite sure. We'll see. But um, you'll see, what, well, I'll, in a second, I guess what I'll do again is I'll compare it against the wetlings. Fairly thin in the cheeks, so it is a good penetrating hatchet, good for crafting, but thickens up very quickly towards the eye. So again, also good for splitting. And it has a bit of weight. Again, the weight is in the video description. Okay, so that's everything I wanted to show you in terms of looking at the AX1 hatchet from Beavercraft. Now let's just bring it in the Wetterlings. So this Wetterlings, and as you know, Wetterlings as a company no longer exists. Uh, some of the designs have been transferred over to Grants for Brooks, that's my understanding. So this hatchet is no longer in production, but the Grants for Brooks wildlife hatchet is virtually identical in almost every way. So if you're looking at high-end hatchets in this size, then the, the Grants for Brooks is the one that you're gonna find. But uh, what I wanted to do is offer the Beavercraft hatchet as an alternative, a budget alternative to the Wetterlings or the Grants Fours Brooks. But, uh, you know, just to give you some comparison. So number one, hammer forged head, uh, head on this one. So, you know, quality made there. Uh, I would say on par as far as quality. Now, the, the older Wetterlings, this is my understanding, I'm certainly no expert, the older Wetterlings used a higher carbon steel than the more modern Grants Fours Brooks do, so they could attain a harder edge, kept their edge better. Uh, I no issues with this one splitting out, but I, you know, I haven't heard of any issues, so I guess it was just a little harder to sharpen than maybe the Grants Fours Brooks are today. Uh, the hammer pole, I just kept it shiny. It was a little less polished than that, and I just wanted to clean it up. Uh, it hadn't been a I was secondhand to me, by the way. It hadn't been abused. It hadn't been hammered on or anything, but I just wanted to clean up the edges a little bit to clean it off. Now, you can see it didn't come with that uh, cross pin there, but um, yeah, you can see it's splitting out the handle. By the way, I do have a replacement handle for this that I'm going to put on it at some time. I just haven't gotten around to it. Let's put it that way. But I wanted to give you a comparison. If you can see the cheeks, very, very close. In fact, I think it's a little bit thinner through this portion than it is on the Wetterlings. However, the edge on the Wetterlings, let me just lay the Bushcraft one down, or the uh, Beavercraft one down. This has a much more gradual approach to the tip. And uh, yeah, I like that. It's, it's, you know, it means deeper penetration. It could mean weakness on some hatchets or racks, but not on this one. So this has good, deep penetration, great for crafting. Now, just looking at the sizes, you can see that the Beavercraft is a little larger in head, and you can feel the weight in your hands as well. And that's about where the differences end. Now, I am going to show you the handles in a few minutes when I go to make comments on the ergonomics for the Beavercraft. But there is the heads. So I'm going to pull the camera back just a little bit so you can get a better look at the handles of the two of them. All right, I put the masks back on the, both of the hatchets, just for safety sakes, obviously. So let me just start with the Beavercraft. I'm going to be looking at the handles here, the ergonomics of this. Um, it, it's a nice looking handle. I'll say that about it. I wasn't sure. You can see how wide the grain is in terms of the handle. But again, a small hatchet like this, you're not going to have to worry about impact uh, destroying the handle and in the short term at least, so uh, I don't see that as an issue. Um, okay, very straight in the handle. The knob is small, and I'll have another comment to say. And the throat area up here at the top is wide. It's quite broad up here, wider than it needs to be, and narrow right through here. Uh, yeah, okay, let me just pick up the Wetterlings. I hold the Wetterlings or the Grand Force Brooks uh, as the standard to, to compare others against. So. 
that's why I'm, I'm doing this. So what can I say? Oh, first, let's look at this. Grain orientation, it's still not straight up and down, but it's pretty close, isn't it? Pretty close. And it's a much tighter grain on this handle as well. The knob at the end is much bigger and much more pronounced and curved and uh, better. It, it, that's the only way to do it. What I find is if I'm holding the hatchet at the end with the wetterlings, I have good control over it. With the Beavercraft, not so much. Now, this may be extra large hands, but my hand wants to move down and down and down off of the end of it. I don't feel like a positive stop at the end like I do with the knob on the wetterlings. It just stops me right there. Up here, it is broader. Across here, very comfortable in the web of my hand when I'm using it like that. It is small, but it is not too small. In fact, it's very capable of small work like this or like this. And as I move down the shaft, that curve even here still works for carving purposes. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. This is much broader through here. Let me see if I can do this again much broader through this portion right here and it's almost comes to a point in the back and what I have found if I'm working up here anywhere near the top like even here for close work like that that starts to make an impact in the web of my hand that makes it a little bit uncomfortable it's not so much the thickness but it is the fact that it comes to a almost a point not a sharp point but just it's much more narrow there and there um, that's easy enough to remedy. In fact, I, if I keep this, that's likely what I'll do is I'll just, there's enough wood there to work with that I can round that off a little bit flatter there and there without sacrificing any of the strength at all and get a much more comfortable in the hand hatchet. Okay, on an axe, you may not care about that. On a carving hatchet, it makes a difference because you tend to work all the way up and down the, the handle on a carving hatchet. Again, the things I guess I um, don't like about this so much is the knob is not large enough, and this is too large, if that makes any sense. All right, enough comparisons that way. Let's just do some very quick demonstrations with it. All right, in full disclosure, I'm at a new site out here on Suzy Lake, so I haven't completely outfitted it with everything it needs. I recently built the bench that I have right here, but I don't have the chopping block I would like to have. It's sufficient for splitting woods with uh, batoning uh, to get you know fires going, but it's not really a good chopping block. So what I have in the short term is I have a length of birch sitting here and it's going to sit on top. It sits uh, securely. I just like a, a proper block to chop on so uh, I'll, I'll do that at some point. So this is maple, very very dry and all I'm going to do is put a point on it. Now I'm not going to do the full point with the beaver craft to start with. I'm going to move uh, a few chops with this and then go over to the wetterlings so that I can Give you some side by side. I might as well take the mask off of this now to save a second. Lay it down safely. Put the mask in my pocket along with the Beavercraft one. So yeah, I'm just going to put a bit of a point on this and uh, well, I'll probably do half with the Beavercraft and half with the Wetterling. So yeah, it's not the best chopping block at all. Turn it a little bit. But it's working. It's not moving too badly. I was afraid it was going to jump all over the place. Okay, so chomping isn't bad because you move back to get some more swing. It's still... Well, back here it's pretty much the same as the wetter links. It's way up here where it's different. So if I'm up here working... Well, all right, we'll leave that demonstration for a moment. Pick up the wetter links. All right, <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. That digs in hard. All right, so all I did is put a point on the end of this piece of maple just for, because that's a fairly common task with these things. And here's what I found between the two of them. So the beaver craft is sufficient to the task, if not as good as maybe the wetterlings is. And the difference being here is the bit itself. So where this is a much more gradual uh, grind down to the, the apex, 
this has a much more abrupt grind down to it. But I expect if I work to this back a ways, such as it is on the Wetterlings, I think the chopping would be pretty much equal between the two of them. All right, what I've got is another split of, or a piece of uh, birch here that I want to split in half. I'm not going to carve a full spoon, but I just want to do some of the carving you might do because that will involve some further out as well as close up, and I'll get set up for that. All right, so what I have is probably 13 inch by three inch, three and a half inch, piece of birch that I want to split down in two pieces as if I was going to start curving a spoon. As I mentioned, I'm not going to go through the whole process of doing that, but uh, I want to baton it in half with my hatchet. Um, I have a, a rock down here. Don't worry, I'm not going to baton down all the way to the bottom with this hatchet. I'm going to just start the split down there. This is a little bit more stable. It went in so far, nice and evenly. Now we're just reaching the cheeks. This is where the splitting really should take place. Oh, so easy. Yeah, that was easy. I can finish it off up here now. In fact, I don't think I have to. It is split all the way down. Just the bark holding it together. There we go. Not very good wood at all, but I think it'll be sufficient to the task of uh, doing the demonstration that I want to do here. Get some of the bark off. Okay, so I'm just gonna work the back of this piece of wood a little bit, right here. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Got an idea, why don't I do a little bit more with the wetterlings. The wetterlings has a bite. This really does have much more bite. And that's strictly due to the grind itself. Actually, I don't think I need to do any more for demonstration purposes. I have enough that I can give you some uh, thoughts on both of these hatchets and uh, give you the good, the bad, and what you, the reasons you may want to look at the Beavercraft. Right, you know, I think it was clear, at least it was to me, that the Wetterlings perform much better in that little bit of demonstration than maybe the Beavercraft hatchet dead did. But, uh, you know, there's a couple things here. I've had this for a long time, so I'm very used to it. And when you get used to a tool, you know how to use it to its utmost. So maybe there was an unfair advantage in terms of my experience with the Wetterlings compared with the Beavercraft. But on top of that, what I, I found is that there are a few aspects of the Beavercraft that are a bit of a hindrance in getting the most out of it. And uh, let's just talk about those. And the reason I want to talk about those is because I think they're easy fixes. First off, I mentioned the grind a few times now. You know, you know that is still very, very sharp. Okay, I didn't do a lot of work, but it's still very, very sharp. And if you take the time to bring the grind back, I think you'll find that this will bite in into the wood much better than it does now. And the other one is, is the ergonomics of the handle. I can't do anything about the knob. I can't make that any bigger. I guess I could wrap tape around it or something, but that would be tacky, I suppose, would be the best word for it. Um, yeah, you can't really do anything about the knob. However, up here, I can certainly take a little bit of wood off of here and a little wood, a bit of wood off of there, and it would be much more comfortable to hold. It's actually, if you squeeze on that, that's very uncomfortable right now. So using it for an extended period of time, especially with the impacts in the back of the web of your hand and the palm. Um, yeah, that's fixable. This is fixable. It'd be nice if it came in a perfect uh, ergonomics, everything was perfect about, about it, but it's not. However, one quarter the price of the Grand Sports Brooks, one third to one quarter the price, makes this a much more attractive hatchet for most people. For most people, this may be all they ever need. It may be something they look at as a project that they wanna uh, take it and upgrade it. I'd recommend that anyway, if you do buy one. And maybe it's just a stepping stone to bet a better hatchet at some point in the future. However, having said that, you know, I may well replace 
the handle on this, I, uh, I, like I said, I've got a spare handle for this one. Maybe I'll take that spare handle and put it on this one because the eye is the same size, so it would go on well enough. The head, I think it's, it's great. It's good materials, well-shaped, well-weighted, it just need, and well-hardened. Um, it just needs more of a gradual sharpening on that bevel to bring out the most of it in terms of its penetration of the wood. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to offer you that comparison side by side so you knew what you're getting into when you buy this hatchet from a beaver craft. It is well worth the money, but it has a few shortcomings. The nice thing is they're fixable. They're upgradable. You can do something about those. I will put all the information I have, including the links to where you can take another look at the Beavercraft hatchet in the video description below. If you have any comments or questions, put those in the video or in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.